This little reef is only a few years old, but it's already full of life. Aye, this reef is busy, even if it's not very big. Hey, it's big enough. G who said that? I'm right here. Show yourself. Oh, here I am. I'm a frogfish. Name's Anton. Oh, you look so much like the reef. I didn't see you there, matey. That is the idea. I'm camouflaged, which means I blend in with what's around me. It keeps me safe from bigger fish who want to eat me, like those sharks. Sharks? Everybody hide. Uh. Hmm, I thought I smelled food. Let's head to a bigger reef. Oh, see what I mean? <laughs> you fooled them, matey. Fascinating. These other fish can't blend in like the frogfish, but the reef has lots of places for them to hide. This reef keeps us and all our friends safe. It is our home sweet home. Oh, look out! Oh. Whew. Sorry about that. We fixed the pedals, and now the gup F steering isn't working right. Aye, and as soon as you fix the steering, something else will break. I know, but she's the first gup I ever built, so I can't give up on her. Maybe if I pedal a little faster. Yep, that's good. Are you all right? Yep. But now I gotta fix the steering, the pedal, the rudder, the top, the bottom. Ah. Is there anything on the gup F that doesn't need fixing? The seats are still comfy. <laughs> Captain, the storm tracker shows that there's a hurricane on the way. Octopod to Quasi, Shellington and Tweak. There's a hurricane heading your way. And it's moving fast. Take cover in the guts. There's not enough time to return to the octopod. Aye, aye, Captain. We'll ride out the storm in the gup sea. Very good. Barnacle's out. There's a hurricane about to hit, matey. Storm coming. Oh, everyone take cover. Are you all all right? Hi, Captain. The Gup C took a pound in, but she's still in one piece. Wish I could say the same about the Gup F. <gasps> the reef! Oh, 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 oh no! Oh. Uh, jumping jellyfish! There's nothing left! Where's Anton? Ahoy, matey! Glad I found you. Oh, I'm not. I mean, if I'm that easy to see, then I'm not camouflaged. How will I hide from the sharks? We can't hide either. Hmm. I see what you mean. Captain, the coral reef's been destroyed, and these fishies need a new place to live. We have to do something. Agreed. Dashy, sound the octo alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, the reef dwellers need our help. Their home was destroyed by the hurricane, and now they have no shelter or protection. Maybe we could move all the fish to another reef. There may not be enough time to move them before the second part of the hurricane hits. Second part? A hurricane starts with strong winds and waves that stir up the ocean. Then there's calm like it is now. But that's because we're in the quiet center of the storm, known as the eye. After the eye passes, it's followed by winds and waves even stronger than the first ones. But the fishies will never survive that without a reef. Hmm. What if we build them a new reef? 
Ah, you're talking about making an artificial reef, Captain. But an artificial reef? An artificial reef can be made out of anything. A sunken ship or even an old train carriage. Algae, sponges, coral and plants attach themselves to it. And that attracts fish who make it their home. But what could we use to make an artificial reef? Well, the truth is that the Gulf F isn't much of a gulf anymore. <laughs> but I reckon it'd make a great artificial reef. Super, super! Great idea, Tweak, but we'll have to work fast. The first step, we should cover the Gulf F with algae and coral, Captain. Using lots of sticky limpet glue. Octonauts, let's do this. <laughs> Spot. Much better. <sighs> well, what do you think? Oh, it has plenty of places for me to blend in. And plenty of hiding places for the rest of us. I say, let's move in. Uh, uh, hold on, everybody. Don't touch anything yet. The sticky limpet glue still needs time to dry. Captain, the second half of the storm is coming in quicker than we thought, and it's going to be big. Cap, the glue hasn't hardened. Everything we've put on will get washed away. Oh, no. Oh, you get washed away. I'm scared. Oh, no, it's a tragedy. This is a disaster. Don't worry, me hearties. We Octonauts always have a backup plan. Anybody got a backup plan? Ugh. It's a shame the artificial reef doesn't have a helmet like we do. Hmm. Maybe we can give it one. Seal. Okay, Tweak, lower the tow line. Now take it away, Tweak. You got it, Cap. Easy now. And down. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So much. The dome will protect the reef cap, but if it takes a direct hit, I can't guarantee it'll hold. Dashi, can you give me the exact direction the hurricane will hit from? Sending it to you right now, Captain. Octonauts, we'll line up the gups A, B, D and E and form a wall to stop the hurricane from hitting the reef too hard. And I'll use the gups C to try and keep the dome steady. Stay close together, everyone. Hurricane force current will hit in five, four, three, two, one. Brace yourselves. is perfect for frogfish like me. And for us, too. we love it. Yeah, right. for all of us. Wonderful. Well, Quasi, I admit that the gut bath was never the fanciest gut, but I'm proud to say that it sure is the homiest gut. This is oh, wonderful in here. Oh, I am no longer so Fergal of the Sharky. Seahorse.
horses. Thank you. Thank you, Tunip. No problem. Peso, this gull needs your help right away. Hmm. Let me guess. A giant fish head jumped out of the water and crashed into you. Well, yes? Well, how did you know? Every single creature who's come into Sick Bay today says they were hit by a giant fish head. Yes! Giant fish head! Giant fish head! Giant fish head? I've never heard of anything like this before. I'd like to come face to face with this giant fish head myself. Well, believe me, it's a monstrous sight. You'll be as good as new after a little rest. Oh, lovely. Captain, there could be more patients out there who need help but can't make it to sickbay. Agreed. Peso, take the gup E and look for hurt creatures. Quasi, you go with him and stop this monstrous giant fish head before he strikes again. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Fish heads lurking down here. And I don't see any hurt creatures either. Let's head to the surface. <laughs> Nothing up here except a giant fish head! <laughs> oh no, that gull is hurt! <laughs> We've got you, Mr. Gull! <sighs> Thanks for the landing pad. Oh, I can't fly with this wing. There you go. Good as new. Giant fish on the mountain. Um. Quasi to Octopod. Come in, Octopod. Go ahead, Quasi. Captain, we've been attacked by the giant fish head. And the gun is sinking. Dashie, sound the Octo Alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, Quasi and Peso have been hit by a giant fish head. A giant fish head? <laughs> yes, their gup is sinking and we need to go after them. The gup sees all ready to go. Very good. Shellington, you're with me. We open the octo hatch. You got it, Cap. Yeah, he's so heavy, he's taken the gun down fast. Stop! Help! We need to pull him out. Bye. Before he crashes the gun right into the sea floor. How about a little help? Right on time, Captain. Shellington will attach the tow line to the gut E. Ah! Tow line secure, Captain. Very good. Now, let's give it a good, strong tug. One, two, three. Guys, you're not a giant fish head. You're a sunfish, the largest bony fish on Earth. But where's your tail, matey? <laughs> sunfish like me don't have tails. We're all head. The name's Sonny. Nice to meet you, Sonny. Now please stop crashing into things. I didn't mean to. I've got a bad case of the itchies. Sometimes jumping out of the water splashes them off. A bad case of the itchies? Hmm. Let me take a look. Oh, my. You have lots and lots of parasites. Parasites are tiny things that live in your scales and make you itchy. Uh-oh. Here comes another attack of the itchies. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. We've got to get rid of his parasites and fast, or he'll just keep Ooh. crashing into... It's look out! It's Sometimes, sunfish throw their bodies around to shake off parasites. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But they can also get rid of their parasites by letting other creatures clean them off. What creatures, Shellington? Sometimes cleaner fish do the job underwater. Other times, a sunfish will go to the surface and let gulls clean the parasites from above. Coming! Ah, oh. it's, it's, it's. Sonny, if you go up to the surface, lie on your side and relax, then gulls can clean you from above, while cleaner fish get rid of your itches from below. But what if it tickles? <laughs> I don't like being tickled. But until you get rid of the parasites, you'll be itchy. All right, I'll try it. But if it tickles, I won't be able to keep still. Captain, the cleaner fish and gulls in sickbay should be perfect for this job. Agreed. Quasi, you and Shellington take the Gup Sea back to the octopod and then meet us at the surface with the cleaning crew. Aye, aye, Captain. Hey, so you and I will help Sonny swim up to the surface without crashing into anything else. <laughs> Itchy sunfish coming through. Stay clear, please. Itchy, itchy. Uh -oh. itchy. Wait, Sunny, turn down. around. Itchy. Ah. I'm stuck. That current is strong. If we swim into it, we'll be stuck as well. We sunfish are big, but we're not very good swimmers because we don't have it. Barnacles to Quasi. We need to pull Sunny out of a strong current and we need... Booster packs, Captain. On our way. Hang on, mateys. This could be a wild ride. Oh, come on, come on. We haven't got all day. I guess the Gup Sea isn't the fastest Gup around. Get ready for turbo speed. I didn't know the Gup Sea had turbo speed. It doesn't. <laughs> And now, let's get rid of your itchies. Cleaner fish and gulls, this is not a giant fish head. It's a sunfish and he needs cleaning. Yes, but I'm afraid he won't be able to keep still if it tickles. Oh, no tickling, please. No problem. We're all professionals, right, guys? Right, OK. No tickling, I understand. All right, Sonny, on your side. Let the cleaning begin. Not a parasite on you. How do you feel? <sighs> Great. No itches at all, Doc. Thanks, guys. Sorry I crashed into all of you earlier. Next time you get a bad case of the itches, uh, let us uh, clean you before you go crashy, got it? Clean before crashy. Got it. <laughs> Here's a sticker for being such a good patient. Hey, <laughs> that tickles. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, Captain, could you practice somewhere? Uh, sure. 
Fuzzy, sound the Octo Alert. Octonauts to the HQ. Octonauts, we need to. Yeah! Fascinating. That's a type of whale called an orca. Look, there's another. And another. And another. Remarkable. We've attracted an entire pod. What's a pod, Professor? It's a group of orcas, Peso. The pod helps each other through thick and thin, rather like the octonauts. We've got to bump him back. Let's talk before we bump, Quasi. <clears throat> Greetings, Orca friends. Please, do not bump our ship. <laughs> That's enough. Everyone back. I'm terribly sorry. Is your ship all right? Yes, thank you. Is his head all right? Oh, that one's hard-headed. He bumps first and asks questions later. Very brave, though. Hmm, sounds like someone I know. We're curious about your ship. We heard it make an interesting sound. Oh, you mean the Octo Alert? No, more like this. <coughs> oh, um, that, that was me. I was having trouble on my accordion. We thought it sounded quite lovely. Oh, thank you. Octonauts, who wants to go out and meet our new friends? Want to race? Ah! OK! <laughs> hey, you didn't say go! straight for the beach. Oh my, that's not a good place for an orca. Maybe I can stop him before he gets there. have a head start next time. Bet I'll still win. <laughs> uh, 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 just let me get turned around here. Uh, give me a push, will you? Aye. Uh... Ow! Quasi, <laughs> are you all right? Aye, Captain, but I can't get the orca to budge. Oh, I don't feel very well. Is it just me or is it getting really hot? Quasi, there's a bucket in the gup. Will you grab it and pour some water over the orca? He needs water to stay healthy. Aye, aye, Captain. If I could just... <laughs> oh. oh, no, I'm stuck. And I can't stay out of the water for long. Don't worry. On my honour as an octonaut, I promise that we will get you off this beach. In the meantime, Quasi will keep you cool. Oh, thanks. Octonauts, the orca is stuck on the beach. Our mission is to get him back into the water. Until then, we must keep our whale friend cool and wet. I'm on my way, Captain. Tunip, if you don't mind, I could use some help from the Vegimals. <laughs> the orca is too heavy to move himself when he's on land. If the orca can't move himself, 
We'll have to move the orca. Tweak, we need you here as soon as possible. Right away, Cap. Hey, I hear my port calling to me. Oh no! All of the orcas are heading straight for the beach. Quasi, keep pouring. I'll be right back. Stop! Please, let us pass. We must go after our cousin. If you go too close to the beach, you'll get stuck as well. We're his pod. Members of a pod always do what they can to help each other. You can count on the Octonauts to bring him back to the pod safe and sound. But there must be something we can do to help. Well, I know it cheers him to hear your voices. Maybe you could sing to him. All right, Captain. We shall sing to him. The orca is too heavy to move when he's out of the water. We've got to figure out a way to pull him back out into the ocean where he belongs. We're gonna need rope. Lots and lots of rope. I'll contact the octopod and ask them to bring all the rope we've got. There's no time to lose. Ouch! Now, you listen here. <laughs> you don't have to hide. No one will hurt you. This beach belongs to us crabs. You and that giant thing must go, go, go! It's getting hotter and hotter. Octonauts, grab the ropes. Hmm. Ready to test, Cap. Octonauts, take your positions. On my signal. One, two, three, pull! Ow! Stop, stop! Oh, that really hurts. Captain, I don't think it's enough to pull him. Now, if we could get the ropes under him, we could lift him up. Hmm. We need a way to tunnel under the sand with the ropes. I think I know who can help us. Attention, crabs! You crabs have a special ability to tunnel under the sand. Will you use it now to help the orca? No! He got himself into this. He can't get himself out. Ah! Let me help you. There you go. Well, that was uh, really quite helpful. Thank you. So, are you with us? Okay, sideways, march! Octonauts, let's do this. One, two, three. Oh! Again! One, two, three, pull! <laughs> One, two, three, pull! Yeah, it's working! Keep pulling! Captain, our pod is grateful to you and your pod. You can always count on the Octonauts to help. Remember to call on us if we can ever do anything for the Octonauts. Shall we practice our special signal? <laughs> Goodbye, Orca friends. Goodbye, Captain. Until we meet again. Status report, Dashie. We're right on course, Captain. Spending a day at the beach was a great idea, Captain. Actually, it was Dashie's suggestion. Well, after all, it is summertime. And even the Octonauts need a holiday now and then. Apple, Apple. Apple. 
What did they say? <laughs> they want to know, are we there yet? Not yet. Almost. And we are here. No need to rush, everyone. We have plenty of... Coming through. You certainly came prepared, Dashy. I sure did, Captain. I can't wait to do a bit of surfing. And I bought some extra surfboards if anyone wants to come along. Surfing sounds like fun. I'm always on the lookout for a new adventure. Yow! <laughs> so, before long, you can sense the waves before they even reach you. You kind of become a part of them. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive! My family and I used to body surf all the time, so using a board is easy. I'm sure anyone can do it. Maybe not anyone. Pirates are better at swashbuckling than surfing. Maybe. Come on, Quasi. Why don't we ride the next wave back to the beach? Hi, matey. <laughs> See you back on the beach, Dashy. Be there soon. Oh, oh hey, sorry. Didn't mean to spook you. I'm Violet, and this is my friend Vic. Sir. We're surfing snails, which means we love to surf. Yeah, we live on the surface of the ocean. And these bubbles keep us afloat. Wow, I've never met a surfing snail before. That's okay, Dudette. We've never met a surfing... Uh, whatever you are. My name's Dashy. I'm an octonaut. And I bet my friends back at the beach would love to meet you guys. This sounds cool. Race you to the beach. your own bubbles? That's right. Like this. <gasps> and use them like surfboards. Wow. Fascinating. Radical. All well and good when the water's calm, but what happens when a big wave hits? Like the one that got me? Dude, you thought that was big? You should see the really big ones we ride. Hey, I know. Tide's coming in soon, and there's going to be some major wave action. Want to check it out? Uh... I do. Let's go. Awesome! This is pretty far out. I know, right? This is far out. No, I mean, pretty far out from shore. <laughs> Don't worry. It'll be totally worth it. So, what are we waiting for? by a huge wave. Can't they just surf their way to safety? This wave was too big, even for them. And the rough water was popping their bubbles. That's not good. Surfing snails can't swim. If their bubbles pop, they'll sink underwater. They won't be able to get back up. Then we have no time to lose. 
Quasi peso dashi to the Gup X. Right up there is where I last saw the snails. Then let's take a look, shall we? Peso, you stay here in the tank. We may need you and your medical skills once we find the snails. Aye, aye, Captain. Octonauts, let's do this. There they are. Oh, no, their bubbles are popping. Activating glider wings. And up. Get close, Cap, and I'll grab them. I can't get any closer without crashing. <laughs> we'll have to try something else. I know. Peso, send up the Octo Ski. On its way, Quasi. Prepare for airdrop. Aye, aye, Captain. Dashi, ready? Totally. <laughs> oh, hurry, do that. We're almost out of bubbles. Ah! I've got this. Octo do that. Well, thanks. There's only one thing that would make this day complete. A nice cat nap on the beach? <laughs> no, Quasi. To see you stay on the board long enough to really enjoy surfing. <laughs> uh... Come on, let's give it one more try. Totally. Yeah. One more try. Come on, pirate dude. All right, mateys. I'll give it one more try. What are you doing, mateys? We're listening to the most popular song of the summer. Ah, uh, doesn't sound like any sea shanty I've ever heard. That's because it's a whale song made by humpback whales. 
Look! Wow! These whales are on their way to their summer feeding grounds. They use their songs to talk to each other. And they can hear the songs even when they're miles and miles apart. And the song they're singing now has been really popular this year. All the humpbacks are singing it. It's the only song on the radio. Listen. Here. Here. And here. Humpbacks all over the world are singing the exact same song. Incredible. Let me try. Hang on. That's new. Maybe they got tired of the old song. No, I mean, it sounds different. I've never heard a voice like it before. Maybe these whales have, Dashie. Good idea, Captain. Excuse me, humpback whales. Yes? Sorry to interrupt your journey, but we just wondered if you'd ever heard a song like this before. Uh, nope, not heard that before. It doesn't even sound like a humpback. The singing doesn't match anything in the Octopod sound collection. Whatever's making that noise, there's nothing like it in the ocean. This could be an entirely new species of whale. Or an entirely new species of sea monster. Well, there's only one way to find out. Octonauts, it's time to investigate. I'm picking up something big on the tracker. Very big. It should be on the other side of this reef. Ah, there's nothing here. No, but I thought I saw something. Me too. Something big. The trick is still saying it's up ahead. Then let's go, mateys. It's gone again. I get the feeling it doesn't want to be disturbed. Let's go forward gently this time, so we don't scare it. Whatever it is. You hear that? It sounds so sad. Like the world's loneliest sea monster. Or the world's loneliest whale. That's a humpback whale. But his voice is like no humpback I've ever heard. I think he's looking for food. He's a young one and he looks very skinny, Captain. Then he might need our help. Activate helmets. Hello there. That's a very interesting song you're singing. Oh, thanks. It's my I'm Hungry song. My name's Joe, by the way. Are you on your own, Joe? Yep, I'm pretty much always on my own. I guess the other humpbacks kind of don't understand my singing. Captain, Joe is far from the summer feeding grounds. Without the other whales to show him the way, he won't have enough to eat. Joe, why don't you come with us to our octopod and we'll see if we can help you. I don't suppose there's any food at this here octopod. I'm uh, kind of hungry. Absolutely. Follow us. Right behind you. Mmm, <laughs> these here fish biscuits are pretty good. Captain, I think I found the cause of Joe's unusual voice. What is it, Peso? These are the tubes inside Joe's nose. And these are the tubes inside a typical humpback's nose. See how much smaller Joe's are? Of course! Whales sing by pushing air through their nose. But because Joe's tubes are so narrow, his songs sound different. Uh-huh! So that's why the other whales can't understand me. Yow! What was that? Oh, gee. <laughs> Just my tummy rumbling. I don't suppose you have any more of those fish biscuits. Captain, Joe can't just eat fish biscuits. He needs a proper whale diet. Yeah, and the vegetables need a break. Hmm, Joe needs food and fast, so we need to get him to join a group of whales who show him to the summer feeding grounds. The last group is on its way to the feeding grounds. After they've gone, there are no more humpbacks in this part of the ocean. Then time is running out. Dashy, sound the up to alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, Joe here is hungry and all alone. If we're going to help him, we need to find a way to make the other whales understand Joe's song. Um, 
might have an idea, Cap. With a little help, I think I could build a special machine that Joe could wear that would make his voice sound like the other humpbacks. Oh, really? Oh, but won't that take a long time? I'll have it done faster than you can say bunch of munchy, crunchy fish biscuits. It's our best shot. Octonauts, let's do this. <laughs> Oh, Joe, you can wear the Joe coder on your neck. Just tap it with your fin when you want to sing, and your songs will go from this. Go ahead, Joe. <coughs> to this. <coughs> hey, I sound like a regular humpback. Now I can. <coughs> But now Joe's gone. A loud noise frightened him. We better find him fast, or the other humpbacks will be gone for good. There's no time to lose. Let's go. No sign of him, Captain. We found Joe before, so we can do it again. Peso, check the tracker and look for a big shape. Uh, I'm looking at the tracker, and it's covered in big shapes. Of course. We're surrounded by whales. We have to find Joe before they pass by on their way to the feeding ground. Maybe we could sing. I'm not sure now's the time for singing, matey. No, I mean, what if we could use the Joe coder to make me sound like Joe? Good idea. Then Joe will want to see who else sings like him. Tweak. I'll just change that and reverse this and there. That ought to do the trick. Right, Peso. Go for it. Here goes nothing. I hope you're listening, Joe. <gasps> what was that? It might be my tummy. Think I ate something funny for lunch. Keep trying, Peso. You can do it. <gasps> That's it! He's done it, Captain! Now we just have to hope Joe can hear it and wants to see who's singing his song. There aren't many whales left to pass, Captain. Soon it'll be too late. Come on, Joe. Where are you? What? That sounds like my voice. Hey, so where'd you learn to sing like that? I'll show you, Joe. Oh, it ain't gonna make that terrible noise again, is it? It's fixed, I promise. <laughs> Ooh, I can't believe it! That works! <laughs> now, that's more like it. Let's just hope someone's listening. Hey, who's that singing? What a great song! It's our pal, Joe. Oh, I love your style. We're on our way to the feeding grounds. You should come with us. Oh, gee, thanks. And thank you, Octonaut, for helping me sing my song. Listen. They're all singing your song. Now go. Good work, everyone. Joe should have no trouble finding the feeding grounds now that he's teamed up with the other humpbacks. And they really seem to like his song. It's not just Joe's friends. Humpbacks are singing it everywhere. <laughs> Looks like it's catching on here, too. That's a damselfish. That one's a blue-headed wrasse. That one over there is a surgeonfish. What's that one over there? That's, uh, 
Uh, well, from here it sort of looks like an old boot. Old boot? Ah, oh, that's a weird name for a fish. No, I mean it actually is an old boot. It's just some rubbish. Shiver me whiskers. There's rubbish and litter everywhere. Dashy, any idea where it's coming from? It looks like debris from a storm, and it's moving along pretty fast. A current is pulling it all into this bay here. That's not good. A bay like that must be home to all kinds of creatures. They could get tangled up in the litter, or try to eat it and get sick. Then we need to get to that bay before the rubbish does. Dashy, activate manual steering. Already on it, Captain. and begin warning any creatures you see. Avast, garden eels! There's a bunch of dangerous rubbish headed this way. You better take cover. Sounds like a real mess. Hey, thanks. Well, that was easy. everyone. Looks like all the creatures have either left the bay or found shelter. Just in time, too. The debris is almost here. Then I guess we're ready to begin Operation Cleanup. Wait, do you hear that? Rockety rabbits! A pod of dolphins! Look at me! Not just any dolphins, spinner dolphins! What? I said they're spinner dolphins! Look how they're leaping out of the water! Spinner dolphins love to jump and splash around. <laughs> and speed! We'd better get them out of the bay before the litter gets here. Attention dolphins! Can I have your attention, please? Um, better turn up the volume. Ahem! Attention! I'm Captain Barnacles of the Octonauts, and we need to warn you about... Ah, it's no use, Captain! These spinner dolphins are just too noisy. Alright, everyone. Let's take it down a notch. Ah, that's better. If I could just have your attention. Sorry, friend. It'll have to wait. It's time for us to power down. Power down? Excuse me. Are you looking for the way out of the bay? It shouldn't take long if you just... No, don't leave! Hello? It's like they can't hear me. Fascinating. I've read about this, but I've never actually seen it. Do you know what's going on, Shellington? I think so, Captain. This is how spinner dolphins sleep. They swim together along the seafloor like they're on autopilot. They can sleep and swim at the same time. That's right. It's a bit like sleepwalking, but in this case, sleep swimming. Can they see? Sort of, but they can't really hear while they're in their sleep state. Oh, I guess we should wake them up then. Quasi, no. Spinner dolphins always go to sleep at certain times of the day. Waking them up early could frighten and confuse them. Well, we better do something. The debris is starting to wash into the bay. Looks like this cleanup just got a little more complicated. Octonauts, circle formation. Octonauts, we've got to clean up this mess and keep these sleeping dolphins safe at the same time. Tweak, clear a path through the rubbish for the dolphins. You got it, Cap. Quasi, Dashy, Shellington, and Tunin, you gather up the rubbish and bring it to Pacer and me on the beach. Super, super! Aye, aye, Captain. Octonauts, let's do this.
coming up to naught. We've almost got it. Tweak, how are the dolphins doing? So far so good, Jack. The dolphins are still sleeping. Whoa! Oh no, if one wasn't tricky enough, now we have two groups of sleeping dolphins to keep safe. Don't worry, mateys. I'll clear a path for these dolphins. And I'll stay with these guys. When I go right, they go right. When I go left, they follow me to the left. Ah, ah. Follow me, guys. Christ is here to lead the way. Amazing. In their sleep states, the dolphins must think the gut bee is part of the pod. Keep it up, Quasi. Ah, I could keep this up all day, Captain. As long as these dolphins stay asleep, I can keep them safe and... Oh. Uh-oh. Double uh-oh. What? What's going on? Huh? The bay! It's full of litter! We gotta get out of here! Oh, uh, Cap, I think we might have a bit of a situation here. I don't like this! Attention, dolphins! If you could just calm down for a moment... To keep this up much longer, someone's going to get hurt. We have to get them out of here. That's what I've been trying to tell them. <laughs> but you didn't say anything. Wait a minute. You made that exact sign jump earlier. It must mean something. Not the jump, the splash. We spinner dolphins make different splashes that mean different things. It's like our own special language. That splash means follow me. So why aren't the other dolphins following you? Oh, they're making so much noise that they can't hear my splash. Hmm, maybe we can help you make a louder splash. <laughs> Leave that to me, Captain. You just told them there's a hungry shark nearby. Do it like this. Ah, let me try that again. What did I say this time? You just told them to swim in circles. Quasi, take a look at this. It looks like she does a leap, spin, double twist, then splash. Try to copy her exactly. Leap, spin, double twist, splash. Got it. Leap, spin, double twist, splash. They heard that. It's working. Come on, let's splash together. Through the rubbish. Left, now right. Watch out for that old net there. Just a little further. It looks like one more splash will do it. <laughs> Let's make it a big one, matey. Hey! Nice work, Octonaut. We've cleaned up all the rubbish and all the dolphins are safe. Thanks for the help, Octonauts. And sorry our napping caused so many problems. Should we show them our new splash, Quasi? On three, matey. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, ho oh, very impressive. What does that one mean? Yeah! <laughs> This is Octopod. I'm about to go out and explore the coral reef. Get ready to see some great pictures. Very good, Dashy. We're all watching. Look at these coral fans. 
beautiful. Oh, I've got to get a picture of that. Just a little bit closer. What happened? Dashy, come in. Octopod to Dashy. Peso, sound the octo alert. Octonauts to the launch bay. Octonauts, we've lost contact with Dashy. We're going after her. Tweak, we need the guppe right away. She's ship shape and ready to go, Cap. Peso, Quasi, into the guppe. Yow! Tweak, open the octo hatch. Aye, aye, Cap. Any sign of Dashy yet? Not yet, Captain. There she is, by that rock over there. Dashy, can you hear me? Hmm. Oh, oh, I, I, I hear you, Captain. Oh, she's awake. Wait, you need a checkup. Oh. How do you feel? I feel okay. You seem fine. <gasps> My camera! It's fine too. Dashy, what exactly happened? I was about to take a picture and then I heard a very loud boom. It was so loud that it knocked me out. And that's all I remember. What could make a sound that powerful? I know what, me hearty. Dashy must have been struck down by the dreaded giant shrimp monster. But shrimps are small. This one's big. <laughs> When the shrimp monster snaps his giant claws, the boom is loud enough to knock out anyone who hears it. Uh, Quasi, I'm not sure we're dealing with a giant shrimp monster. I'm sure I didn't see any giant claws anywhere. Octonauts, let's find out whatever made that boom and stop it before someone else gets knocked out. Aye, aye, Captain. I'm with you, Captain. We'll divide up and search the area. But first, ear protectors, everyone. Hi, mateys. These will keep us safe from the boom of the giant shrimp monster. I feel safer already. Quasi, you search those rocks over there. Aye, aye, Captain. Dashy, you be our lookout in Gup A. And Peso, you take that area over there. Aye, aye, Captain. Uh huh? That fish still needs a checkup. Wait! I help any creature who is sick or hurt. I'll just take these off for a second so I can use my stethoscope. sign of the shrimp monster yet? Peso? Ah, Peso. The shrimp monster snaps his giant claws again. Come on, I'll take you back to the gup. Quasi to cap Barnacles. Barnacles here. Go ahead, Quasi. Peso's been knocked out, Captain. I'm on my way back. Barnacle's out. Who's there? Oh. Peso. 
say so. Can you hear me? I... I... I'm okay. Tell me, did you see the shrimp monster, me hearty? No, but there was a big boom noise like you said, Dashy. <gasps> oh no! Don't those belong to the captain? Yeah! We've got to find him! I'm coming with you. I'll call you if I see the captain. You help the captain. I'm going to stop this shrimp monster once and for all. Ah, I can hear it, but I can't see it. and your giant claws, you scurvy beast! <gasps> oh, no, you don't. Peso, bandage wrap, now. I surrender! I surrender! You're the giant shrimp monster? I'm not a giant shrimp monster. I'm a snapping shrimp. Snapping shrimp? Yes. I'm one of the loudest creatures in the sea. We noticed, but why have you been attacking octonauts? <laughs> I'm the one who's been under attack. I thought all of you were after me. So I did what a snapping shrimp does. I use my loud claw snap to protect myself from animals who want to eat me. We promise we don't want to eat you. Ah, we thought you were coming after us. Sorry for the misunderstanding. No hard feelings, but do you think you could untie my claw now? Um, no more snapping? Snapping shrimps, Honor. But how can such a tiny little thing like you make one of the biggest sounds in the sea? Hmm, I don't know. I just kind of snap my claw like this. Uh, no! no! All right. I was just trying to work out how my claw makes that boom, that's all. Hmm. I think Dashy and her camera can help you do that. Really? Dashy, make sure your ear protectors are fastened correctly. Let's make a video of your claw snip. All right. Ready? Go! I got it! Now let's watch the video of it in slow motion. Snappy's claw opens and look at that bubble starting to form. And there goes that bubble right out of the claw. It looks like it's going to... Pop! Jumping jellyfish! Indeed! Would you look at that? <gasps> Whoa! Did you see how your big claw can make a bubble very fast? When the bubble pops, boom! So that's how a little snapping shrimp like you can make one of the biggest sounds in the sea! Thanks for showing me, Octonauts! Can we see it again? <laughs> wow, I've never seen a moon like this. Tis known as a pirate's moon and happens but once every 100 years. Shiver me, whiskers, the flying swords! Flying swords? Aye. According to legend, tis only on the night of the rare pirate moon when cold ocean waters turn warm that ye may be lucky enough to see the flying swords. They're a sign, me hearties, that you are near a sunken pirate ship where X marks the spot of the greatest treasure ye could ever hope to find. 
the sword of the Pirate King. But any pirate who hopes to take it as his own must be brave indeed, because the sword of the Pirate King is guarded by three magical flying swords. Me granddad always wanted to find that treasure. Alas, he never had the chance. But now I do! Arr. Are we going to look for the Pirate King's sword, matey? Not we, Peso. Tis a mission I need to go on alone. For the honor of me granddad, Calico Jack. I understand. Good luck, Quasi. We'll follow your progress from the Octopod. Yeah! <laughs> A sunken ship. This could be it. Well done, Quasi. Keep us posted. I'm going after that sword, me hearties. Oh, these freezing waters are shivering me whiskers. Oh, what a glorious ship. The Pirate King. The sword is as good as mine. Strange. The water just got warmer. This is definitely it. Quasi, come in, Quasi. We've lost contact, Captain. His radio's been damaged. Dashy, sound the Octo Alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, we've lost radio contact with Quasi. He may be hurt or in trouble. Dashy, keep trying to radio him. Peso, into the guppe with me. Tweak, open the Octo hatch. Got it, Cap. <sighs> Quasi to Octopod. Come in, me hearties. Ah, oh, me radio's broken. But I've still got a Pirate King sword to find. <laughs> okay, now, where's that X that marks the spot? <gasps> that warm water again. Yow! A flying sword. Yow! <laughs> No telling where more of these magical flying swords might be lurking. Ah! Here I am! No, over here! No, down here, matey! Arr! Two down, one to go! There he is, Captain. Hang on, Peso. This could get a bit rocky. Something tells me that the X that marks the spot is right behind this now! Oh, the last one. Stand aside, you scurvy sword. Magic ye may be, but quick enough to catch this pirate? Never! Captain, I've lost sight of him. Looks like he's inside the kelp forest. Quasi! <gasps> Look! Quasi! <gasps> it's not Quasi! We've been chasing a figurehead! One that could only have come off a pirate ship! But then, where's Quasi? Ha <laughs> ha! How ran it! <laughs> so, it's a duel you're wanting, is it? Then it's a duel ye shall have! Hey, you're a swordfish! <laughs> of course I'm a swordfish! What did you think I was? A magic flying sword? <laughs> the only flying me and my fellow fish do is when we leap out of the ocean! So that was you! The light of the pirate moon made it look like it. Do I care what it looked like? No! 
What I do care about is uh, this is our feeding ground, and we want you gone! Ha! I don't want your food, matey! I want the sword of the Pirate King! And if you think I'm leaving without it, you don't know much about pirates! And uh, you, my friend, don't know much about swordfish, or you would think twice about fighting us. We live by the sword. We use it for swimming fast, slashing at our food, and defending ourselves. Ha -ha! Three against one, eh? Just the way I like it. <laughs> Just regular sword fish, but we can heat up our eyes. It helps us to see better in the dark waters. It's working. My paws are getting warmer. Now let's get you out of there. Oh, 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 oh. Quasi! Captain! Grab hold of the tow line! Sword is bruised. You need a bandage. Good as new. Oh, thank you, my friend. And thank you for saving our fellow fish's life. It was nothing. You're as brave as a swordfish, and not bad with a sword either. Anything we can do in return, you just let us know. Ah, all I want is what I came here for. The sword of the Pirate King. Huh? huh? You must have seen it. It's here somewhere. X marks the spot. What is an X? What is a mark? What is a spurt? You swordfish aren't the magical guardians the legend told of. So maybe there's no sword of the Pirate King either. Come on, Quasi. Don't give up now. Hold on. X marks the spot. Mateys, I'm gonna need your help. The sword of the Pirate King! Wow! If only me granddad could be here to see him! Octo floats should be pretty easy to spot. There's not much out here in the open ocean. There they are. These octo floats have been measuring water temperatures for weeks. They should tell us a lot about the weather out here. Even though they're underwater? Of course. The temperature under the ocean tells us a lot about the weather up on the surface. Uh, 
Uh-oh. The weather forecast doesn't look too good. Jumping jellyfish. It says here there's a strong chance of water spouts up at the surface. Captain, according to the octofloats, water spouts could start forming at the surface any minute. Water spouts? Like a water spout. Well, Tulip, a water spout is a tornado that forms over water. They appear most commonly out here in the open ocean. A tornado? Yeah. Don't worry, me hearty. It's only a bit of twisty old wind. Shellington, Dashy, gather up all the octofloats and get out of there as fast as you can. Already on it, Captain. We'll round them up and... Whoa! Hurry, before they sink! <laughs> Good catch! Now for the floats! Oh no! The wind must have blown them away! Dashy, Shellington, is everything all right? Five floats are lost on the surface. And water spouts are starting to form in the area. We're on our way! Quasi, peso, to the guts! <laughs> to find all the octo floats, we'll have to split up. Aye, and it looks like we have some company. Then there's not a moment to lose. Ah. Got it! Shillington, hurry! To go. Captain, I found the last float. Try to get it quickly, Quasi. Yeah. Hey, watch it, matey. Oi, who are you calling matey? The name's Trixie. I'm a trigger fish. And I'm Quasi. Pleased to meet you, Trixie. Well, that's our float, and we need it back. Oh, no, you don't. I make my home under whatever I find floating on the surface of the ocean. But I can't just leave this float out here. You don't want it littering up the ocean, do you? Oh, I've made a home out of all kinds of rubbish before now. Whatever keeps me safe from the birds up above and the big fish below. And when I find a home this good, I don't give it up easily. <coughs> Fast! There's no time to argue, Trixie. You better dive down deeper where it's safe. I'm staying right here. No water spout's gonna scare me out of my home. All right, you don't have to leave your home, but I've got to move it to safety. <coughs> Follow me, Trixie. <coughs> He's in there with a pig. Gotcha! Uh-oh! Uh -oh. 
Quasi. Ah, we've lost radio contact. Let's sound the Octo Alert. Octonaut, to your stations. <laughs> Quasi has been carried away by a water spout. He's somewhere out there in the open ocean. Water spouts are going away, Cap. But there's no sign of Quasi anywhere. Then we'd better spread out and find him. Octonauts, let's do this. Captain Barnacles, come in. Oh, it's no good. What about you, Trixie? Are you okay? I'm fine, but... <laughs> Hungry. Nice of you to drop by, little fishy! Quincy, get under the couch! Oh, I wish I was back in my home. Any sign of Quasi? Not yet, Captain. Wait, I think I see something. Oh, no, just the last octafloat. Better load it up anyway. Don't worry, Trixie. You should be safe down there. Maybe not for long. Saltfish! Mm, a trigger fish snack. Ow! Whoa! Oh, there you are. Oh! 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 Trixie, look out! Oh. Let's try that again. Uh-oh. I'll save you, Trixie! Oh. Oh. Where'd you go? Oh. Still no sign of Quasi, Captain. He could be anywhere. We've got to be close. Captain, I'm picking up some strange noises. It's the same grunting noise we heard when we tried to contact Quasi before. It could be a clue. Lead the way, Shellington. Octonauts, follow those grunts. Stay close, Trixie. Coming out of there, is she? Phew. Thanks, Captain. Who's your new friend, Quasi? This here is Trixie the Triggerfish. A grunting triggerfish, of course. And this octafloat is her home. It protects me from the birds up above and the big fish down below. Well, Trixie, it looks like you need that octafloat more than we do. I have an idea, Captain. <laughs> If we leave this octofloat out here, it can be your job to guard it. <laughs> okay, Trixie? I don't think that'll be a problem. You got that right. We triggerfish always protect our homes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. Force of habit. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, Tunip. Some warm kelp soup should help your Vegema pox feel better. Looks like we need more soup. Oh, we can't 
keep up with them, Captain. Can't Peso give them some medicine for their Vegima pox? Peso can't make the medicine until he finds the special ingredient. Peso, come in, Peso. Any luck finding the red Audi? Not yet, Captain. There isn't much of it in this part of the ocean. <gasps> Peso, over here! Red algae. This should be just enough for the Vegemol's medicine. Captain, we found some. Excellent work. Now hurry back to the octopod. The Vegemol's are getting a bit, um, restless. <laughs> We're on our way. Oh! The algae. Excuse me, I... Hey, clear off. This here's my home. I think I dropped something down there. Aye, ah, and that's where it's stayed. No trespassing. Ah. <gasps> Careful, Peso. That's a moray eel, and they can be very protective of their homes. Captain, we've got a bit of a problem here. The red algae has fallen into a moray eel's lair. Hmm. Hurry back to the octopod. Quasi, sound the octo alert. Yeah. Octonauts to the HQ. <laughs> Octonauts, a bottle of red algae has fallen into the home of a moray eel. We need that algae to make the Vegemol's medicine. Ah, why don't you let me take care of that slippery old eel? I'll give him the old... I don't think that's a good idea, Quasi. Moray eels can be very dangerous, especially when they're defending their home. But maybe there's some way you can lure the eel out of his lair. And while he's chasing after me, Peso can slip inside and get the algae. Uh, but what if the eel comes back before I can find it? Hmm. I've got it. Sea snakes. They can be very poisonous, and even Moray eels know to stay away from them. So all we have to do is find a couple of poisonous sea snakes and ask them nicely to keep their fangs to themselves and help us. Precisely. Count me in. That may be a little difficult. Captain, I have a friend who may be able to help. He's not a poisonous sea snake, is he? Ahem. <laughs> not exactly. According to Professor Inkling, his friend lives somewhere around here. I don't see anyone. <gasps> Peso, don't move a muscle. What is it, Quasi? There's a dangerous fish right in front of you. A banded soul. You're lucky I spotted it, matey. Banded souls are very poisonous. Professor Inkling's friend is a banded soul? <laughs> Professor Inkling? <laughs> he is indeed my friend, but I... No banded soul. <gasps> You're an octopus. Not just any octopus. A mimic octopus. Sir Mortimer, the mimic octopus, at your service. Any friends of Professor Inkling are friends of mine. But how did you... I, I mean, I, I knew it was a trick. Oh, it was no mere trick, my boy. We mimic octopuses cannot squirt ink to get away from predators, uh, so we must protect ourselves by pretending to be poisonous sea creatures. Wow. Not bad. <gasps> Not bad? My dear fellow, it is magnificent! Wait till you see my poisonous lion fish! <laughs> oh, it's all right. Mortimer, can you impersonate a sea snake? Prepare to be dazzled as this mimic octopus becomes not one, not two, but three poisonous sea snakes. Hiss, hiss, hiss! Meh. Bravo, Mortimer. We need an actor of your talent for a special mission. Do you think you could help us? Lead on, my seafaring friend. My audience awaits. Show off. I heard that. There he is. All right, everyone. Here's the plan. Step one. Quasi, on my signal, you'll lure the eel out of his lair and lead him into this rocky reef. 
Aye, aye, Captain. Step two. Peso, you swim inside to look for the bottle. Righto. Step three. To keep the eel from coming back too soon, Mortimer will create a distraction here. It shall be among my greatest performances. <sighs> Octonaut and Mortimer, let's do this. Step one. Quasi, go. Yeah! Oh, stay away from my home. Arrgh! Come and get me, you toothy lump. Oh, I knew you'd ask it for it. <laughs> yeah! Okay, so time for step two. I'm entering the lair, Captain. The algae has to be around here somewhere. <laughs> It, my lionfish impersonation had you fooled. Well, I suppose, but only for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. Was he? In here. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! And you'll stay in there if you know it's good for you. He's heading back to his home. Quasi, are you okay in there? Yes, Captain. Carry on with the plan. Come in, Peso. Any luck finding the red algae? Not yet, Captain. It's a bit of a tight squeeze in here. We'll buy you some more time. On to step three. Here he comes. Ready, Mortimer? Ready for the performance of a lifetime, dear boy. Sea snakes! Yes, we are one, two, three sea snakes. Be gone, or we'll bite you inside out. Hiss, hiss, hiss! Um, don't overdo it. Ah, yeah, I, I think I'll take another way home. Excellent, Mortimer. Another five star performance. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Peso, any luck? Captain, I think I see the bottle. But it's stuck. Oh, no. The eel's taking a shortcut. Peso, the eel is coming back. Fast. You've got to get out of there. Now. Yeah. Almost got it. Yes. Time to skedaddle. Ah, trespasser. What are you doing in my home? Peso, grab on. Yeah. Hey. Nice work in there, Peso. Quasi, mission accomplished. We're on our way to pick you up. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Captain. Huh? As for you, Sir Mortimer, don't think you can fool me this time. I wouldn't do that if I were you, dear boy. Sea snake bites are poisonous. I know that, but these aren't sea snakes. They're sea snakes! Yow! Hop on! We've got to get this medicine back to the vegetables. There you go. You'll be better in no time. The captain tells me your performance was quite brilliant. It was. We couldn't have done it without your help, Mortimer. A mimic octopus is always happy to put on a show. And I have a new impression now to add to my repertoire. You do? <laughs> sea snakes, yo! <laughs> Not bad. We have some amazing photos of Antarctic sea life, thanks to the new cameras on the gaps, Captain. Excellent, Dashi. And who knows what else we might find today? <laughs> Monsters in the ocean! Swim for your lives! Monsters? Three of them at least! The one I saw was just a giant head with teeth! The one I saw was a giant squirmy sea serpent! The one I saw, I couldn't even see the whole thing! That's how huge it was! And where exactly did you spy these hideous creatures of the deep? Close by! Gotta keep moving! We don't want to run into those monsters again! 
Three monsters! Peso, Quasi, let's investigate. All right, everyone, keep your eyes peeled. And make sure your gup cams are turned off. just saw what appears to be a big-headed monster, exactly like the one described by the first dolphin. <gasps> I just saw the sea serpent monster the other dolphin saw. Ah, just me luck. I haven't seen hide no fin of anything monstrous. But I do now. It's the big one, mateys, and she's coming right at me. Shiver me whiskers. Let's see what the photos from the gub cans can tell us. That's the monster I saw. Yes, and that's the one I saw. And that big whatever it is is the third monster. Hmm, I'm not so sure there were three monsters. Let me try something. <laughs> It's a crocodile. It's a saltwater crocodile. The world's largest crocodile. It's as big as a bus. And it's a long way from home. Saltwater crocodiles normally live in places like Australia. That's over a thousand miles away. Hmm. It's not unusual for saltwater crocodiles to travel far out to sea looking for food. But I've never heard of one spotted in the Antarctic Ocean. Oh no, he must be lost and freezing. Saltwater crocodiles are reptiles. They stay healthy by moving to different places when they need to warm up or cool down. If they get too hot, they move to a cooler place. And if they get too cold, they move to a warmer place. But here in the Antarctic, there's no place he can go to warm up. He won't be able to survive this extreme cold for long. Dashy, sound the Octo Alert. Octonauts to the launch bay. Octonauts, we have a saltwater crocodile who is lost and in danger from the icy cold water. Our mission is to find him and take him home. Quasi, peso, to the guts. Remember, Octonauts, this is a huge creature we're looking for. If it feels threatened or scared, it may attack us. Aye, and the way it nearly swatted me gut, that tail could crush us like a tin can. It would more likely chomp you with its massive jaws and teeth. Keep a sharp lookout, me hearties. That croc could be lurking anywhere. Below us, behind us, or above us. What happened? He might be injured. Let's take a closer look. He's not moving. He doesn't seem to be breathing. I've got to find out what's wrong. We'll back you up, Peso. Shellington, stand by to assist. He's got a heartbeat, but very soft and slow. Shellington, any idea what's going on with him? Yes, Captain. When saltwater crocodiles get very cold, their bodies can slow down and go into a kind of sleep where they don't need to eat or breathe air for a long time. So, he'll be fine. <laughs> After he wakes up, he'll head home. The saltwater crocodile might not know his way home, Quasi, and he may not be able to wake up at all because of the extreme cold. We need to get him back to the octopod and warm him up. But he's too big to fit through the octahatch. I wasn't thinking of bringing him inside the octopod. Octonauts, prepare to warm up a saltwater crocodile. <laughs> The croc's attached to the octopod cap. He's as snug as a bug. A really big bug. And this will tell us how he's doing. Good. Hey, sir. Stay with him. Everyone else, back to the ship. Dashing, raise the temperature of the octopod as hot as you can get it. 
and set a course for the saltwater crocodile's home in Australia. Captain's working. The crocodile's body temperature is warming up. It's not the only one. It's as hot as the Amazon jungle in here. He's breathing again. It means the crocodile is warming up. But now that he's breathed out, the croc is going to need to breathe in. And he breathes air, not water. Which means we need to get him up to the surface fast. Dashi, activate steering wheel. doing peso he seems fine let me get a bit closer <laughs> he just tried to chomp me don't worry peso saltwater crocodiles slap their mouths open and shut when they get too hot it helps them cool off <laughs> oh uh, he may start thrashing about as well now you tell me because it's too hot, then cooling him off should calm him down. Dashy, lower the octopod temperature. Cold as you can get it. I'm on it, Captain. <laughs> the cooling plan is working, Captain. The croc is going back to sleep. Octonauts, it's time to enjoy some chilly indoor temperatures. <laughs> Warm, warm sunlight on a tropical pirate's cove. We just need to keep the octopod cold a bit longer. Once we reach warmer waters, we can return to normal temperature and let the croc wake up naturally. This is an ice way to travel, eh, Quasi? Australia, Captain. The croc's home is just a few miles ahead. Captain, the saltwater crocodile is moving a bit. I think he's waking up. Dashy, you can return the octopod temperature back to normal. We'll leave the octopod here and use the gups to tow the croc the rest of the way. All right, octonauts, let's bring this big fella home. Boy, what's all this? What do you think you're doing? Oh, and easy, we're friends. Here to help. Help? Then why am I tied up? Looks like you're trying to capture me. Nobody captures a salty. <laughs> Octonauts, abandon guts. You can tie me up, but come any closer and I'll chop you down. Please, let us explain how you got here. We found you in the Antarctic. You were lost. And freezing. And so we brought you back here to your home. Yeah. I do remember being lost. Big icebergs everywhere I turned. So cold I couldn't stay awake. Guess you really did help me out. We help all the creatures of the ocean. We're the Octonauts. Pleased to meet you. You can call me Salty. Well, Salty, you have a bruise on your snout. May I bandage it for you? Yeah, go on. And no chomping, please. No chomping. <laughs> there. Thanks for all your help, fellas. We all need a helping paw now and then, Salty. Even crocs and pirates. Whew. That sun sure is getting hot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, tell you. <laughs> Didn't mean to scare you, but uh, you know I'm awful hungry all of a sudden. Uh, you should probably leave now, mates. You don't have to tell us twice. Goodbye. <laughs> Secret treasure of Whitebeard the Pirate. I wonder what Whitebeard's treasure could be. No one knows, Captain, but Whitebeard was a fearsome pirate. I've heard that he could throw one of his legendary flying snowballs from the Arctic all the way to the tropics. Calico Jack once told me that a snowball from Whitebeard landed right on the deck of his ship and it never melted. Remarkable. 
Here, Cap. This be the spot. for that lock. Let me just find the right one. Bluebeard's treasure, Redbeard's treasure. Ah, here it is. Oh, your paws are so cold I can barely feel them. Whoa, my key! Shiver me whiskers. Captain, a hungry sardine just gobbled up me key. That could make the sardine very sick. We've got to find her. Let's split up to cover more ground. Aye, Captain. I'm fine, Captain, but I just took a whale of a ride. What was the meaning of those bubbles you were blowing at me? Well, I can't help it if you crashed into my bubble net. Humpback whales like me make bubble nets so that we can catch a lot of food at once. We're sorry to disturb you, but uh, we're chasing after a school of sardines. Maybe you saw which way they went. No, but I'll keep an eye out. If I see them, I'll send you a signal. That's how us humpback whales communicate. Just listen for this. Got it? Got it. Whoa, there's some krill. Yummy. Hey, gotta go. And the name's Mitch. That little sardine is going to get a big tummy ache if we don't find her soon. Hi, Captain. Octonauts to the HQ. <laughs> We need to track down a sardine who swallowed Quasi's key. Oh no, that could make the sardines sick. I found a school of sardines in the area, Captain. Great work, Dashie. But how will we know which sardine has swallowed the key? Tweak? This x-ray viewer should do the job. Tunip, let's show him. Hide that hammer behind your back. Super, super! Very good. We'll need more than one of these X-ray viewers to find a little key in a little sardine in a great big ocean. I'm on it, Cap. Peso, meet us out here in the Gup E. Once we find the right sardine, we'll need you to perform an emergency keyectomy. On my way, Captain. Quasi, Peso, activate X-ray viewers. Aye, aye, aye Captain. Captain. The sardines. Let's go. And now move in closer so we can look for Quasi's key. They're splitting up. You two follow that group, I'll follow the other. Aye, aye, Cap. We have to hurry. That sardine needs our help. Ow! Quasi, none of my sardines has the key, which means that one of yours does. Quasi and I are still chasing them, Captain. Quasi, are you? Quasi? Quasi to Captain Barnacles. Do you read me? Peso, are you there? I've got to get me gut back in the water fast. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, there's that humpback whale. Ahoy, Mitch! 
Can you hear me? Oh, maybe if I send that signal. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa, sounds like somebody needs help. Whoa, you really do need to watch where you're going. Yeah, yeah, but right now, I need to get my cup off this iceberg. Okay, I'll tip the iceberg over for you. Ugh, too big for me to tip over by myself. Yeah. But it won't be too big for me and a couple of friends. I'll send out a signal. Yo, Mitch. You called? Hey, guys. I need some help tipping over this iceberg. Let's do it. Always enjoy a little iceberg tipping. Hold on up there. Ready, guys? One. A little more. Two. A little more. Three. Yeah. Thanks for your help. And now I've got to catch up with those sardines. We'll come along just in case you will run into any more trouble. This guy has a habit of crashing into stuff. No, now we've lost Quasi and the sardines. I'm right behind you, mateys. And I brought some friends. <laughs> nice to have you back. Captain, sardines, they're right under us. Everyone, follow me. And there's the sardine who swallowed me key. I see her too, but we need to keep her in one place so I can remove the key. Hey, bitch! Could you and your mates blow a humongous bubble net to keep the sardines from getting away? Of course. Come on, fellas, bubble net. <laughs> some of these bubbles, then let out a nice big burp, like this. Uh. Oh, pardon me. <gasps> uh. It worked! Mickey! Sorry I gave you a tummy ache. I feel much better. Thanks. Thank you, humpback whales. No problem. Always enjoy making a bubble net. We'll just be on our way now, but, uh, will you look after him? He, he has a habit of, uh... Crashing into things? <laughs> yes, I know. Oh, well, Captain, now that I've got me key back... We finally get to see what's inside Whitebeard's treasure chest. <gasps> Tis the legendary flying snowballs of Whitebeard. <laughs> and look... It's a note from Whitebeard himself. It says, whoever finds this treasure is worthy to use it. Octonauts, let's do this. <laughs> All right, Mr. Lobster, let's take a look at that antenna. It's all right, this won't hurt. All done. Oh, thanks, Doc. Bye. Cheerio. Ah, my last patient of the day. Peso, come in, Peso. Captain, is something wrong? There's no time to explain. Head down to the launch bay now. Ooh. <laughs> What's going on, Tweak? I don't know, but the captain sounds real worried. 
Here he comes. Peso, I've got a lot of hurt patients back here. Hurry. <gasps> There's more of them in here. Peso, we found them covered in rubbish. They need your help. Tweak, clear out your workshop. We'll need that space for an emergency room. You got it, Peso. Work, Peso. Your quick action has saved these pelicans' lives. Aye, but what happened to them? I've never seen a bunch of birds so bent out of shape. Ah, twas awful out there. The lads never knew what hit them. What was it, matey? Were you attacked by some kind of rubbish monster? Not now, Quasi. These pelicans need to rest. No, it's all right. Tis a tale that needs to be told. Old Charlie's the name, and this here's me fishing crew. We'd flown out to sea for our first fishing trip in the morning. And we'd just spotted a big school of little fishes for our breakfast. All right, lads, I told them. Prepare to plunge! That's how we pelicans go fishing, see? We dive in fast, then scoop the fish up in our pouches. But this time, we were tricked. Wasn't a school of fishes at all, but a big bunch of grimy sea junk. Luckily, Dashie and I happened to spot them as we were passing by in the guffs. I don't know what we would have done without your help. <laughs> but why was there so much junk in the water? When plastic gets thrown into the ocean, it sometimes drifts together in big floating patches of rubbish. The plastic can be very dangerous to sea creatures who might eat it by mistake. Aye, and the rubbish patch that fooled us is still out there somewhere. Then we'd better clean it up. Quasi, sound the octo alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Already in the launch bay? Oh, uh, right. Octonauts, our mission is to clean up the rubbish patch that hurt these pelicans. Dashie, can you track it on the map? Already on it, Captain. That must be it. It's drifting over the octopod right now. Peso, you stay here and look after the pelicans. Everybody else, let's head to the surface. <laughs> Shiver me whiskers! Look at all that rubbish! With these nets, we'll have it cleaned up in no time. But, Captain, what do we do with the rubbish once we scoop it up? Don't worry about that, Dashie. We'll put the rubbish into this octobin. And then take it back to the octopod to recycle. Mm. Octonauts, let's do this. Octonauts, we're making good progress. I'd better see how things are going back at the octopod. Say, ah, uh, ah, uh, looks good. Peso, come in, Peso. How are your patients? Well, Captain, I'd say the pelicans are healing nicely. Excellent. Ooh. Peso, what's that noise? Hmm, looks like there's another patch of something heading your way. Hmm, more rubbish, maybe. Whatever it is. Moving fast. <laughs> Something's tickling me toes. <laughs> it's not more rubbish. Huh? It's a huge school of fish. Uh-oh. Whenever there's a school of fish this big, there's bound to be a... Yeah! Uh, feeding 
frenzy! <laughs> Attention, swordfish! There's rubbish in the water. It's not safe to eat here. <gasps> In that case, we'd better hurry. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, we're surrounded. Captain, come in, Captain. What's going on there? We're caught in the middle of a... Whoa! Feeding frenzy. It's making the clean-up a little tricky, and we... Captain! Captain! Oh, no. I have to help them. Listen, Doc, we pelicans know a thing or two about feeding frenzies. The trick is to get in and out as fast as you can. But how? <laughs> what say ye, mateys? Ready to stretch your wings? Ready! They're coming from every direction. There's got to be a whoa, way out of here. Captain, jump on! Great timing, Peso. Octonauts, let's move out. <laughs> Don't look down. Don't look down. Thanks for the lift, Pelicans. Good to see you're feeling better. Now, what do you say we clean up the rest of this sea rubbish before someone gets hurt? Remember, mateys, in and out fast. Get ready, Octonauts. When the pelicans dive in, try to scoop up as much rubbish as you can. Prepare to plunge! of it, Captain. Ha! Huh. Good work, everyone. Hold on. Where's Peso? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I'm a medic. I help any creature who's hurt or sick. Oh, thank you. Good to go. Au revoir. That's funny. The swordfish are leaving. The feeding frenzy must be over. Flippity flippers! <laughs> there he is! <laughs> Are you all right in there, Peso? I'm fine, Captain. That was a close one. Thanks, old Charlie. No worry, Peso. Great work, everyone. Pelicans, we couldn't have done it without you. Aye, after everything you did for us, it was the least we could do. All right, mateys, who's up for a little fishing? Hooray! Goodbye! 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 Goodbye. 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 Prepare to plunge! <laughs> hmm, fascinating. Sea stars, and snails, and red rock crabs? Red rock crabs don't live in this part of the ocean. It's too cold for them. I wonder how they got here. Hello, I'm Shellington. I'm an octopus. Stay back! <gasps> oh. <laughs> Impressive. I knew red rock crabs were quick, but I didn't realize they were that quick. There's no need to be frightened. I just want to... This way, Chucks! I'm here to help. You'll never catch us! <laughs> Through his legs, Chucks! <laughs> oh, just can 
stand this place. It's cold, there's nothing to eat, and now some big furry things chasing after us. Captain, come in, Captain. Shellington, how are you getting on exploring that island? Well, Captain, there's a bit of a mystery. I found some red rock crabs, but they don't belong here. This island is much too cold for them, and there's not enough food. They won't last long here. I'm going to need help rounding them up and taking them back where they belong. Understood. Dashy, sound the octo alert. Octonauts to the launch bay. Octonauts, we've got a problem with some red rock crabs on an island where they don't belong. I don't know how they got here but we need to take them back to their home in the Galapagos Islands. The Galapagos are a long way from here. Can we just load them into the garbs? No, that's the tricky part. They're very hard to catch. Every time I try to get close, they run away. Shellington, we're on our way. All right, everyone, let's take this nice and easy. These crabs are a long way from home, and they're probably a bit scared. It's another of those furry things. Don't worry, little crabs. It's time to come with me. Aha! Nice and easy. Hello, I'm Peso, and I'm soaking wet. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, Peso. They squirt water when they feel threatened. Leave us alone. Oh! I'll get my brother onto you. I get away. Oh. Captain, we've been trying to catch the crabs all evening, and we haven't caught a single one. Aye, these little mateys are quicker than I thought. It's getting dark. We'll have to try again tomorrow with the whole crew. <laughs> Good morning, Octonauts. Everyone ready for a bit of crab catching? Aye, aye, yes, Captain. We'll round them up faster and you can save a bunch of munchy, crunchy carrots. Remember, these crabs are extra fast, so we'll need to be quick. Got it? Got, Got it. it. This could take a while, so if you need a break, Tunip and the Vegemals have set up a seaweed snack station. Super, super. Octonauts, let's do this. <laughs> Sounds like Tunip. Tunip, is everything all right? Shiver me whiskers. It's the marine iguanas. Octonauts. <laughs> Funny running into you here. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> Piggy, Ted, Sneezy, aren't you a little far from home? Ooh, not a little, a long way from home. First, red rock crabs, and now marine iguanas. How did all these creatures from the Galapagos end up here? Go on, tell him, Iggy. Shush, I was just about to. It all started with a wild storm. The winds were so strong, they swept us right out to sea. Luckily for us, we was able to grab onto a clump of floating kelp. We used this kelp as a life raft. And a snack. We drifted for days, and our kelp raft was getting smaller. Well, I was hungry. <laughs> Till eventually, we was washed up here, on this little island. Ah, and so the red rock crabs must have been carried here on kelp rafts too. That's incredible. No, it's terrible. The water here's too cold for us to die for seaweed to eat. That's why we've been, uh, borrowing your little snacks. <coughs> Don't worry, iguanas. We'll take you and the crabs back home, just as soon as we can round them up. 
<laughs> you never catch red rock crabs like that. Ah, I think you're right. If only we had something to distract them so we could sneak up on them. Captain, I think I know just the thing. Now what do we do? Just pretend you're sunbathing. <laughs> Shh! Here they come. Now there's a sight for sore eyes. Three iguanas ready for cleaning. Hey, Chuck, Sue's hungry. Red rock crabs love to climb on marine iguanas and eat the gunk off their backs. That way, both of them benefit. One gets fed, the other one gets cleaned. I believe that's what's called symbiosis. <laughs> yes, that's right. Watch. <laughs> oh, it kind of tickles. All right, everyone, now that they're distracted... <gasps> it's those furry guys again! Octonauts, stay in formation! Run for your lives! They'll see. Well, what are we waiting for? No, Quasi. It's too dangerous. Not for a marine iguana. Our claws give us special grip. Watch. If only we had claws like that. Let me see those claws again. Knock yourself out. Mm. You know what, Pesel? I think I might be able to make a song. Tweak, these are a great invention. Thanks, Cap. I call them Lime and Claws. Everyone stay close and follow me. We need to herd the crabs up to the top of the cliff. We're ready for them, Captain. They'll be safe in here. <laughs> it's working, Captain. Just a little further. Steady. Keep moving forward, Octonauts. What are you furry things doing to my friends? Don't worry. We just want to take you back to your home. Take us back home? Well, why didn't you say so? Uh, why you hit your ride? Don't mind if I do. Ah, oh, good. Ah, oh, two! Oh, oh dear! Achoo. Help! Octonauts, form a chain. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Let's bring them in. Good work, everyone. Thanks for helping us, Chuck. We was just a bit scared before, being so far from home. No problem. But we couldn't have done it without the iguanas. Oh, don't mention it. Now, what do you say we go home? I say, let's go, Chucks! Octomorts to the Galapagos. Here we are, the Galapagos Islands. Hey, everybody, we're home! And just in time, too. I could really do with a snack. Me, too. Come on! <laughs> Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> oh no, what happened to you? The reef. I got knocked off of the reef. Don't worry. My name's Peso, and I help any creature who's hurt or sick. May I examine you? Oh, so polite. I like this one. Examine away. What's going on here? <gasps> that does sound strange. We'll need to take an x-ray to see what's going on in there. Flap. 
uppity flippers. There's a tiny shrimp inside you. And there's a sea star and a snail. There are all kinds of tiny creatures inside you. Of course there are. I'm a sea sponge. Oh, but I feel like there's something inside me that doesn't belong. Shellington, we need you in the sick bay right away. Oh, this is wonderful. I've never seen a finer example of commensalism. co -watalism? Commensalism. It means that all the little creatures inside the sponge get a safe place to live, even though the sponge doesn't get anything from them. It's not for nothing they call us sponges the hotels of the sea. And it doesn't bother you. No, not at all. I've never had any problems. Oh, until today. Yes, and if the sponge isn't happy, we aren't happy. Oh. Where are we anyway? Yeah, nobody bothered to ask us before they yanked us off our reef and stuck us in this pan. And what's with all the poking and prodding and light shining in me eyes? Well, I well. say. This used to be a nice place to live. Come on, everybody. Let's get out of here. Uh-oh. They're running out of room. We need to find places to put all these creatures fast. Oh, 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 Finally, a room with a view. <sighs> That's the last one, Peso. Do you feel any better now that everybody's out? No, there's still something in there. What could it be? I don't know, but there's only one way to find out. We've got to take a closer look inside. Tunip, sponge your scope, please. All right, this shouldn't hurt, but you may feel a little... <laughs> tickle. Having a look in... No? See anything yet, Peso? <laughs> Shellington, what is that creature? It looks like a louse. A whale louse. <coughs> what are you looking at? A louse. No wonder I'm feeling so lousy. That thing doesn't belong inside of me. <laughs> You're telling me? He doesn't look like he's feeling very well either. Of course he isn't. Whale lice can only survive on whales, not inside sponges. Excuse me, Mr. Louse, but we need to get you out of this sponge right away. <coughs> oh, no! No way! I'm a whale louse! I ain't leaving until somebody finds me a whale to live on! Captain, the sponge won't feel better until the louse is out of her, and the louse won't feel better until he's back on a whale. Then there's only one thing to do. Peso, sound the Octo Alert. Octonauts to the HQ. Octonauts, we have to find a whale for a sick whale louse. And we need to find it fast. Both the sponge and the louse are feeling worse and worse. <laughs> Ah, oh, there be plenty of whales swimming in these waters. We'll find the nearest one and give the little castaway a home to call his own. Oh, it's not that simple, Quasi. Different kinds of whale lice live on different kinds of whale. We have to work out which whale species this louse came from. I'm running a scan now. Oh, there. Looks like this louse came from a sperm whale. There's no time to lose. Octonauts, let's do this! Don't worry, we'll have this louse out of you in no time, just as soon as we find him a sperm whale. There's something big coming up. A vast! It's a whale! Oh, but it's a blue whale, not a sperm whale. Hmm, keep looking, everyone. Nope, that's a humpback whale. I knew that. Oh, I'm starting to feel a little faint. Oh, 
You're feeling faint. How do you think I feel? <laughs> Hurry, Captain. They're getting worse. We're coming up on another well now. Uh, I can't tell what kind it is, Captain. It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, a sperm wheel! Excellent. Peso, you'd better suit up and... Oh, whoa, whoa. Hey, you stay away from my baby. Oh, the whale's mother. Sperm whales will do anything to protect their young. Hang on, everyone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The mother whale's not giving up. Peso, quasi. I'll keep her distracted. You get the louse on her. But how are we going to do that? Okay, Mr. Louse, this is it. Oh, oh, I don't know if I can make it. Oh, for goodness sake. But this is where you belong, on a sperm whale. I'm just too weak. Hurry, Peso. I don't know how long I can keep her distracted. I've run into some complications, Captain. I'm going to have to perform an emergency lousectomy. Lousectomy? Lousectomy? But I'll need my medical bag. Just tell me what you need, matey! Tweezers, Quasi. I need tweezers. <laughs> now I can't see inside you, so let me know when I'm getting close. A little... a little to the left. Steady. Oh, too far left. Now to the right. Steady. You've almost got him. Steady. And... gotcha! Oh! Oh! Uh, hey! Hey! I'm home! How do you feel? Oh, now that I'm back on a whale, I feel great! Thanks, Doc! And what about you? I feel great! Captain, the louse is on the whale. I repeat, the louse is on the whale. Both he and Sponge are doing fine. Great work, Peso. This is fascinating. Another example of commensalism. The louse gets a home and the whale doesn't mind at all. But she does mind us being this close to her baby. We need to get out of here. Everybody ready? Ready. Ready, matey. Clear. Gotcha! must have brushed against the reef here. Aye, the louse must have fallen off when the whale knocked the sponge loose. Well, now they're both back where they belong, healthy and happy and... Excuse me, got room for a few more in there? Of course, as long as you're not a whale louse, I don't mind at all. Come on, fellas, here we go. It's <laughs> <laughs> a wiggly one. <laughs> Tweak, Peso, our trip to the beach is in a bit of... Trouble. What kind of trouble? A completely stuck kind of trouble. In fact, I don't think we're going to make it home. <gasps> in time for dinner. <sighs> Captain, Quasi, where are you? Stuck in a rock pool. 
We were so busy exploring that when the tide went out, it left us in. We'll just have to make the best of it. Yow! Did anyone bring a beach ball? All kinds of creatures get stranded in rock pools until the tide comes back in to free them. Look at this beautiful shell. We'll have to wait here for an hour until the tide brings the water back in again. Peso, you're in charge until we get back. Me? Right-o, Captain. I need you to keep a watch on things until we get back to the octopod. I'll, I'll do my best to keep everything under control here. You can do it, Peso. Barnacle's out. Sorry, we'll play again later. Right now, I have to get to HQ. It looks nice and calm out there. That's good. Let's check the radar, Tweak. I don't see anything unusual on the radar. Hmm. That's good. Let's listen for any unusual sounds coming from outside the octopod. No unusual sounds out there. That's good. That's not good. It sounds like a, a creature who needs help. We, we've got to do something, Tweak. We've got to, to... Sound the octo alert? Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, I've got to find whatever's making that noise. Don't forget to use the camera on the gup. Yes, so we can see what you see out there. Remember now, we're right here, ready to help you. Um, Peso. Oh, right, okay. <clears throat> Open the Octo hatch, please. You got it, Peso. <laughs> well, Professor, Peso may be a little shaky, but he's doing fine. Yes, Peso's never too frightened to help. Once he's learned that something might be in danger, nothing stops him. Huh? <sighs> it has to be nearby. I hear it, but I don't see anything. Righto. Whoa! Oh, flappity flippers, what's that? <laughs> hmm, I believe it's a hermit crab. Not dangerous, but very unhappy at the moment. Right, time for a checkup. Hello, my name is Peso. I'm an octonaut and a medic. Can you tell me your name, please? Oh. Get me out. Okay, Mr. Get me out. Oh. Now this won't hurt a bit. Oh, my name's not Get me out. I want you to get me out of this shell. I'm oh, stuck. <gasps> Ow! Oh, it's no use. Here, maybe I can pull you out. <laughs> No! Oh, ow, that hurts! Sorry. Oh, I told you it was no use. Don't worry. We'll get you out of that shell somehow. I know someone who can help us. What do you think, Tweak? I'll cut open a shell with my Octo Slicer, and he'll be free easy as pie. Uh, here. Uh, now what are you doing? We're going to remove the shell for you. We'll just cut it open and... Stop! Please stop! 
Oh, hello. Stop? Why? Listen, I'm almost too big for the shell I'm in. I need a new one, and that shell is just right, just right! It may be too small for him, but it's a perfect size for me. He's not the only hermit crab around here, you know. <laughs> oh, well, let's get on with it. If you cut that shell in half, it'll be ruined, ruined! I'll never find another one like it, and believe me, I've looked. If you don't mind my asking, why do you keep changing shells anyway? Oh, because hermit crabs can't grow their own shells, so we borrow the shells of other animals for protection. We move into one shell. Grow up, get bigger. And then move to a bigger shell. So what can we do, Tweak? Maybe I could just cut off the shell and then try to glue it back together. That's too risky. I think we need a new plan. Captain, we have one hermit crab who needs to get out of his shell and another who wants to get in. We have to safely remove the crab from its shell. There's only one thing to do, Peso. We have to perform a crabectomy. Captain, I've never performed a crabectomy before. Even when I was in medical school. Just watch out for those pinchy claws. I'll talk you through the whole operation. I had to perform an emergency crabectomy once in my polar bear cub days. Righto. And I promise we won't damage that shell. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Step one, steady the shell. Step two, fasten the hose. Step three, prepare landing pad. Ready, Tweak? I really hope this works. Me too. <clears throat> Captain, we're ready for the crabectomy. All right, Peso. This should take five big pumps of air to push him out. You'll have to really put some muscle into it. Flippers in place, Captain. All right. On my count. Five. Four. Three. Four, two. One. Yay! We did it! Well done, Octonauts. And especially you, Peso. Your first crabectomy. Thanks, Captain. How are things in the rock pool? It looks like the tide's coming in. Octonauts, we're going home. Yay! Where did he go? It's perfect. Uh -huh. Thanks for the new shell. See ya. Oh, so now he's got my old shell. What about me? No shell, no protection, no nothing. I'm naked. What am I going to do? <gasps> it's the Guppy. They're back. Hey, so. Ta da! Oh. How's this? Oh, 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 lovely. Home sweet home. I think that should last you a while. <laughs> if you need someone to decorate your new home, we do know a decorator crab. <laughs> Captain Barnacles to Shellington and Dashy. How's it going up there? Um. A bit slowly, Captain. This Arctic ice is so thick, it's taking our sonic slicer forever to cut through it. Almost. Just a little more. There! We made it through. We're heading up now to gather the ice samples, Captain. Huh? Huh. Just try to be quick. The hole you made in the ice will freeze over very fast and you won't be able to get back into the, um... back into the water. Aye, aye, Captain. We'll be quick. Over and out. Who's making that music, Captain? 
I'm not sure, Quasi, but it certainly is making it hard to work. Let's investigate. Oh, me hearty. <laughs> I didn't know you were so good at playing music. Thank you. This xylophone was a present from my Aunt Pepita. Well, you're certainly getting good, but, uh, Peso, do you think you could take a break so we can... This is Shellington calling the Octopod. Come in, Octopod. Barnacle's here. Everything okay up there? Captain, we found another hole. Another hole in the ice? Yes, but that's not all. I'm sending a video through to you now, Captain. They're beluga whales, Captain. Yes, I see. But uh, what are they doing? They appear to be trapped under the pack ice. They should be in open water. Can you ask them if they need help? I'll try, but belugas are very shy creatures. Wait, please! I'm Shellington, and this is Dashi. We are the Octonauts. We might be able to help you. Have to breathe. Have to breathe. What are you doing all the way out here, under the pack ice? The water froze over us. We have to stay near this hole. But why do you need the hole? Have to breathe. Have to breathe. But why can't you just swim back out to the open water, where there isn't any ice? Too far away. Can't swim that far without breathing. Have to stay near the hole. Shellington, what do you make of this? The belugas are trapped. There's ice all around them and only a small hole where they can come up to breathe. And this hole is starting to freeze over too. It's getting smaller and smaller. We have to rescue those belugas right away. Quasi, sound the octo alert. Yow! Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, our mission is to lead the belugas back to open water where there's no ice. But we need something that can cut a path through the ice so that they can breathe along the way. Yeah, what about the sonic slicers? They're too slow. We need to act fast before the beluga's Whoa. breathing hole freezes over. Just the thing, Cap. Okay, Tweak. Let's see if your icebreaker attachment works. The ice isn't breaking. Pack ice is really thick. It takes a lot to break it. Yes! Way to go! <laughs> yeah! Give me whiskers! You did it! Open water. Now, if I can just get those belugas to follow me. Belugas, this path will lead you to open waters. Have to stay near the hole where it's safe and quiet. Belugas, please follow me before the ice freezes over. Oh, no. oh dear, this is not good at all. Hmm. The belugas don't seem to want to leave their breathing hole. If only they would follow Captain Barnacles. <gasps> I've got it! Fish biscuits! Huh? What's your plan, Quasi? Well, I reckon these belugas must be getting pretty hungry by now. So I brought them a little fish biscuit snack, courtesy of tuning. Belugas, follow me! It's fish biscuit feast time! Yeah! Yes, it's 
working! Now shiver, whiskers. Those little fishies think this is food for them. Go away. Go on, go, go. Leave it alone. Belugas, follow me. It's dinner time. Too many scary noises have to stay by the hall where it's safe. Why aren't they following me? Belugas, like all whales, are scared of loud, strange noises. So, the sound of the gup sea cracking the ice and the sound of, well, quasi, probably scared them. How can we show them that this path to open water is safe? Professor Inkling, any ideas? I know exactly what sounds will make the belugas follow you. An old whale song recording. They'll hear their own sounds and follow right along. It's working! Oh, 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 my. We're losing them again. We've got to do something, Captain. The path is already starting to freeze over. That noise they make, that sounded a little bit like... Peso's music. Peso, we need you and your xylophone out here right away. Captain, are you sure this is the best time for music? This is exactly the time for music. Your music. Captain, I'm ready to play. All right, Peso, it's showtime. Xylophone playing sounds just like the Beluga song. We have to stay close to the hole where it's safe. But those sounds are so nice. Have to breathe. Have to breathe. It's okay. We can breathe along this path. If we follow the nice sounds down the path, we won't be stuck here anymore. Here we are, open water. Great work, Peso. Thank you, Octonauts. Sorry we didn't follow you at first. We belugas are always a bit shy around creatures we don't know, and all those loud noises scared us. Well, now we know each other. And we love your music. It sounds just like ours. Come on, everyone join in. Two, three, four. Ah, I don't know how to sing like a beluga. Oh, come on, Quasi. It's easy. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Goodbye, Octonauts. Thanks again. Goodbye, Belugas. Safe journey now. Goodbye. <laughs> Octopod to Shellington. How's the eel watching coming along? Uh, it's a bit tricky, Captain. These garden eels are rather shy. They keep hiding in the sand. Good thing I've got all night to study them. Are you sure you'll be okay spending the night out there in the Gup E? Oh, of course. I've got enough kelp cakes and clam sandwiches to last me till morning. Well, good luck tonight. We'll check back in the morning. Octopod signing off. Captain, are you sure he'll be okay all alone out there? He'll be safe inside the guppy, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty quiet night. Nothing out there except one little jellyfish. What could go wrong? Let's power down for the night.
On me. Look at all those jellyfish. Shellington is still out there. Quasi, sound the octo alert. <coughs> Octonaut, to the HQ. <coughs> Good morning, Octonauts. I'm sure you've noticed something strange happening outside. Professor Inkling, what's going on out there? It seems there was a jellyfish bloom overnight, Peso. Jellyfish bloom? When jellyfish find a place they like, where there's lots of food to eat and nothing around that eats them, lots of jellyfish will go to that place at the same time. It's called a bloom. Barnacles to Shellington. I think you'd better drive the Gup E back to the octopod. You'll be safer here. Well, I would drive back, but uh, I fell asleep with the lights on and... Now the Gup's batteries are nearly dead. See? Why don't you just swim home? Uh, that wouldn't be a very good idea, Quasi. These are sea nettle jellyfish. Their tentacles will sting you if you touch them. Stay where you are, Shellington. We're coming to get you. Quasi, Peso, into the Gup A. <laughs> Never seen anything like this. Quasi, activate windscreen wipers. Aye, Captain. Let's move slowly. We don't want to hurt any of these jellyfish. Hmm, they're too thick to drive through. They're clogging the intakes, Captain. Right, we need to get back to the octopod and make a new plan. Activate helmets, everybody. Prepare to eject. We'll have to swim back to the octopod. Yeah! Watch out for the tentacles! Go! Oh, no you don't. Ouch! It's a jellyfish sting, all right. How does it feel? It stings. Don't worry, Captain. I know just the thing for it. Thanks, Tunip. I knew you'd have some in the kitchen. This is the best emergency treatment there is for a jellyfish sting. It smells like vinegar. It is vinegar. It should help with the stinging. Ow. How does your paw feel now? It feels better. Ugh, it smells worse. Thanks, Peso. Now, I've got to get back out there and rescue Shellington. Ah, oh, ow. Captain, you need to stay right here and rest until your paw is completely healed. Don't worry, Captain. We'll rescue Shellington. We? But we'll have to suit up first. Come on, Peso. Are you sure this is a good idea? Relax, Peso. Our deep sea suits will protect us from their stinks. We'll find Shellington, give him this extra suit, and then we'll all go home sting-free. See? I didn't feel a thing. Hey, so, how's it going out there? Uh, a bit rockier than we'd expected. We can't see a thing out here. Don't worry. Dashie will help guide you to Shellington. Just keep going forward until you get to the sandy sea floor. Thanks, Dashie. How are you holding up out there, Shellington? Uh, well, it is starting to get a bit stuffy in here, and I'm all out of kelp cakes. Sit tight, Shellington. Quasi and Peso are on their way. It feels like we've been walking for hours. Keep going, guys. You're almost there. But we still don't see anything except jellyfish. Shellington should be down on the sandy sea floor, right at the bottom of this rocky Whoa! cliff. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, guys. <laughs> The sandy sea floor. Shellington must be close by. He could be right in front of our faces and we wouldn't be able to see him. Huh? Now, don't go wandering off, Peso. I may never find you again. 
It's one of Shellington's garden eels. We must be really close. There's another one. There. <laughs> Fascinating. The garden eels are even faster than you are, Quasi. Shellington, are you all right? Well, my leg keeps falling asleep, but I think I'll be okay. Come on, we've got to get back to the octopod. Put this on and let's go. Quasi, Peso, how's it going out there? Well, we found Shellington and we followed some garden eels up this cliff, but then we lost... Quasi! <laughs> gotcha! Mayday, Captain! My tail's tangled in tentacles! Help! Quasi, come in, Quasi! <clears throat> oh! <sighs> I never should have let Shellington stay out to study those garden eels. Ah, garden eels! That's it! If I can't get through the jellyfish, I'll go under them, just like the garden eels. Professor Inkling, does anything live in the rocky cliff beneath the octopod? Interesting question. As far as I know, nothing lives down there. So I wouldn't be harming any creatures if I made a tunnel through it. Not at all. There's only solid rock there. But what about your paw? Don't worry about me, Professor. Tweak? Hey, Cap. Prepare the gup D. I'm going to need some extra tunneling power. You got it, Cap. A garden eel living in a rocky cliff? It can't be! That's no garden eel, that's... Captain, Captain Barnacles! <laughs> ah, good to see you again, Shellington. Come on. We've got to hurry back to the octopod before this tunnel starts to fill up with jellyfish. Tweak, close the octa hatch. Looks like your paw has healed up nicely, Captain. You know, the jellyfish are actually kind of pretty. Aye, but not when you're tangled in their tentacles. Look at the size of that one. It's good to have you back, Shellington. Oh, thanks, Captain. <laughs> Ooh. Is that vinegar I can smell? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, settle in, everyone. The Vegimals have prepared hot chocolate. Cool, but Oh, and kelp cakes. Thanks, Junip. Thanks for the snacks, matey. Uh, but what are we here to see? Quite an amazing sight, actually. And that is? Dashi set up the remote cameras on the beach so we wouldn't miss a thing. Shiver me whiskers. What won't we be missing? Why, the baby sea turtles, of course. Oh, carry on, matey. Right now, the turtles are still in their eggs, in nests buried under the sand. I'll show you how they got their tunip. This is a video we took eight weeks ago. The mother sea turtles swim up onto the beach at night to lay their eggs. It's the only time they ever leave the water. And this is the same beach right now. The eggs have been under the sand all this time and should be ready to hatch at any moment. And we get to watch it happen. I can't wait. Uh, nothing's happening, matey. Well, one can never be exactly sure when the eggs will hatch. It could be a few more minutes. Or a few more days. Days? <laughs> Have patience, everyone. I'm sure it'll be well worth the wait. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
What's that? What is it? Oh, are the ants hatching? No, it's the wave tracker. A really big wave is in the area. It's moving fast and it's heading for the beach. Flippity flippers, what about the eggs? <gasps> They'll be washed away. Chopper! Won't they be safe buried under the sand? Sea turtle eggs are very sensitive. If they get too wet, they'll never hatch. Then we'd better do something. Dashy, sound the octo alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Octonauts, we have to rescue those eggs before the wave hits the beach. Once we've gathered up the eggs, we'll need to move them to a new beach, fast. Don't you worry about that, Shellington. We'll be ready. Come on, Tuna. Tuna! Everybody else, into the Gup X. Right, we need to remove the turtle eggs from their nests and place them in these special transport containers. Please be careful. The eggs are very delicate and extremely sensitive to hot or cold. Yeah, fussy little things, aren't they? They are, Quasi. If they get too hot or too cold, they won't hatch. We'll be very careful. The wave is moving in fast. We'd better hurry. Octonauts, load those eggs. <laughs> The last one, Captain. Good. The wave is almost here. Tweak, we're ready for the Gup H. Roger that, Cap. Here we come. Lower toe lines, Tunip. Roger, roger. All right, Octonauts. Hook them up. Tweak, all lines are secure. Thanks, Cap. We'll get those eggs to safety faster and you can see bunch of munchy crunchy. Uh, hold on, Tweak. Oh, good catch, Gruber. This one nearly got away from us. Ah. Here comes the wave. Everyone, into the gut now. Brace yourselves. Is everyone all right? Just a little dizzy, Captain. Yow! And ready to go again. Captain, the turtle eggs aren't out of danger yet. We have to get them to a new beach right away. This one is too wet. I think we may have found one, Shellington. Sending you some pictures now. Ah, it seems to have everything the turtles need. The right sand, the right slope, and the right distance from the water. Perfect. Tweak, send us the location and we'll meet there to make new nests for the eggs. Octonauts, let's do this. It. The eggs are all safely under the sand. Good work, Octonauts. Ah, I suppose there's nothing left to do now but wait for the eggs to hatch. Yeah, more waiting. I don't think we'll be waiting long, Quasi. Look. They're hatching. Oh, that's wonderful. Maybe not. Sea turtle eggs usually hatch at night when there are fewer predators around to eat them. This beach must be colder than their old beach, which is making them think it's night time. Turtles? Wow! <laughs> Amazing! Super, super. Oh, just wow. wonderful. Look at them! Huh? <laughs> You're the little guy that almost got left behind. There you go. Hey, put that back. I can do it myself. Oh, sorry, matey. Just trying to help. Thanks, but I don't need help. We sea turtles got to do this on our own. Uh-oh. I don't know what those things are, but they sound hungry. Gotta go. He's right. Those seagulls would love to have a baby sea turtle for a snack. Then it's up to us to make sure the turtles make it to the water safely. Vegetables, are there any fish biscuits in the Gup X? We'll need all the fish biscuits you've got to keep these gulls distracted. Super Gull! Have reached the 
up, everyone. We just have to keep these gulls busy until all the baby turtles are in the ocean. Huh? <sighs> oh, me, oh, my. One of the baby turtles is going off course. Captain, it's your octocompass. Huh? Baby turtles use light to find their way to the water. The light bouncing off your compass must be confusing him. Keep the gulls away from him! Ha-ha! <laughs> Leave that to me, Captain! Yow! Feeding time, gulls! Take the biscuit! Ha! <laughs> Woo! Take that! I'm sorry, little turtle. I didn't mean to confuse you. <laughs> there sure are a lot of not turtles on this beach. Oh, so it's you again. Don't worry, I've got you, little matey. Be careful, Quasi. His shell's not fully hardened yet. Then I'll call you... Soft shell. Good name, but could you please put me down? I want to get to the water all by myself. That's what we turtles do. There you go, soft shell. Just a little further. Thanks. Now no more helping me. I'm almost... <laughs> oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Captain, that seagull's getting away with soft shell. Tweak, follow that bird. We're hot on his tail feathers, Cap. If I'd known this was going to happen, I'd have stayed in my egg. Tuna Otta! Tuna! What are you? Oh, I get it! Aha! Shell, you're okay. Take me to the water's edge, please. Exactly where I left off. There! I did it! All by myself. Well, almost. Thanks, Octonauts! See you later, Bye -bye. Little guy. Bye -bye. Congratulations! Good luck out there. Nice work today, Octonauts. Those baby sea turtles are off to a good start. So, what happens to them now, Shellington? Well, they'll swim far out to sea and get bigger and bigger until it's time for them to return to this very beach and lay eggs of their own. How long does that take? Um, about 15 to 20 years. Yeah! That's a long time to wait. <laughs> Sorry, Gruber. I don't think we have enough fish biscuits to last that long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Captain Barnacles. I, matey. Come on, everyone join in. Right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs>